I see Larry has on his Chicago Bulls damn uniform. So I've uh, then it's Dennis Rodman at that. Oh my God, oh my this boy think he's farming electro <laughs> at that. I told so you now, I wasn't a I wasn't a Chicago fan, I was a Rodman fan. He was a Rodman fan. So before we get to that, let me give y'all some little snippets and something that might bring nostalgia that I really, really love during the 90s. Here we go. Every great drama has its subplots. Game five of the NBA Finals was no exception. The Jazz finally got a marquee performance from their star, Carl Malone. The mailman stole the show with 39 points. Meanwhile, Chicago's leading man, Michael Jordan, was having trouble hitting his marks. Even with Malone's big night, the director of Utah's cast, Jerry Sloan, made a script revision at intermission. He called on a seldom used veteran from Wichita State, a stand-in, Antoine Carr. Carr had five field goal attempts in the second half. He made them all. Without his performance in a supporting role, the NBA Finals would be history. Instead, the Jazz are back in Utah, back on their home stage, after refusing to let the curtain come down in Chicago. Game six, next. This is the NBA on NBC. The 1998 NBA Finals. Tonight, it's remaining in regulation. The impact. Behind the screen. <laughs> I knew Larry liked that one. I knew you liked that one. Put Robin right there the on the end. Larry, Larry, Larry. What? The worm. Tell me what have been your thoughts after watching the finale? Um, I guess before we talk about the overall impact, what do you feel like was the overall impact for these last two episodes? Um. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like the, I mean the last two episodes were a nice, were a nice wrap up. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you when I when I see the when I saw the last two episodes, it sort of it reminded me of like how bad I felt for Carl Malone at the time. Well, partly felt bad because I, you know, the Clippers and the Lakers fan growing up, and so I, I mean, the mailman, especially as a Lakers fan, you get annoyed with them because he would come in, he was big, he was tough. He wasn't always the nicest dude. And, but then at the same time, you're like, this dude is one of the most dominant, one of the greatest players in the NBA, and he just cannot secure a ring. And, and so, man, they got so close those two times. You're like, this dude's never going to get a ring. Him and Stockton are just never going to get a ring, you know? Mm -hmm. And at least not in Utah. And, I, and, you know, I mean, Carl Malone came to L.A. at one point trying to trying to get a ring. Didn't work out for him. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, man. <clears throat> so, I mean, the, the last two episodes are really good. I'll tell you one thing that, that amazes me through this whole series is, I mean, I knew that I knew Michael Jack, uh, Michael Jack, I knew Michael Jordan was hard on people. I knew he was tough on himself. I just didn't realize how incredible petty, how how petty he is. What dude is petty? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, he's petty, but one thing that he did with his pettiness, he used that as fuel to get him going. It's it's one he thing. Did. To, it's one thing to be petty, and you can't do anything productive or constructive with it. But it's another thing <laughs> that any small little slight, like in last night, they showed you how. He was upset. Well, he wasn't upset, but he took it as a slight to him that the mailman got the most valuable player. And that, just, right. made, that just made him want to drive a state in Utah even more. You know? Right. And I think some of the most damning 
evidence or things that came out of this documentary was how everybody was at one point in time trying to condemn the ownership and the general manager for breaking up the team when a lot of commentators are saying that it's on Phil Jackson because he just wanted to take a break. And then the very next year after that, he went and he's coaching Shaq and Kobe. Do you well, think he did take a field? couple years off before he went to LA? Took one year. He took one year and then went over there and was coaching Shaq and Kobe. I still feel like the owner could have made that happen if he wanted to. You know, sure, the general well, manager said it, but I still feel like the owner could have made it happen. I'm with Michael Jordan. The owner could have put everybody on a year contract. Yeah. I mean, it's likely they could have and then gone for, and then gone for, you know, four. But I mean, they, I, I mean, looking at that and listening to the way Jordan was speaking, he did say, you know, after the fact that he would have done a one year contract. But he also talked about how he was emotionally and physically exhausted. He was like, I, I had nothing left. He was like, he was just, he was exhausted and running on fumes. And I mean, if that's the case, I mean, what do you do if you talk about, okay, let's bring them back for, for another go round, put everybody on one year contracts and then everybody's, everyone's physically exhausted or mentally exhausted and they don't have the same motivation that they used to. I mean, what do you do at that point? You just go out there and sort of, I don't want to say tarnish your legacy, but what happens if you go out there and you guys just aren't the team that you used to be? Don't even make it to the playoffs. You I know? mean, then you just lose because they the Bulls didn't go to the playoffs the next year. You just lose. You at least well, yeah, but they game. weren't the, they weren't the Bulls. They weren't they weren't Jordan and Pippen's Bulls. They were they were some hashtag team, some some hagtag ragtag team that just was hobbled together because they lost. You know, they traded Kerr, they traded Pippen. Uh, you know, Jordan retired. They um, released Rodman. They released Rodman. I think all they had left was was uh, was Kukoc and uh, yeah. and Wellington. Hey man, then that's why you keep it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. You know that's what we, that's what the shade tree mechanics be telling you now. And I'm just like this man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You should not have broke that team up. The owners wanted to keep them together. He should have put everybody on contract. Let Jordan work his magic keep everybody in there and go for another title because he even said last night that still to this day haunts him it right. haunts him that they couldn't go after him. the other thing that right. i thought was good and it reminded me of the 90s and just how tough this team was the indiana pacers of yeah. all the people jordan had adversaries with I think they was probably his toughest team. And I'm not considering the Lakers early on. I mean, excuse me, not the Lakers. Uh, I'm not considering the uh, Celtics the or, or the Pistons. Not considering them. Uh, <clears throat> when Jordan was winning, I feel like Indiana was probably the toughest team he had to face, even tougher than the Knicks. Because they wound yeah. up beating the Knicks to get to that Eastern Conference. And Reggie Miller was a dog. He was a dog. He was. And I forgot how good that team was. Mark Jackson, yeah. Reggie Miller, Jalen Rose, um, Rick Smith, Chris Mullins. That yeah. was a good ass team. And they yeah, I was watching seven. that, and I I forgot how good Cheryl Miller's brother is. He's and he is, is he's a Hall of Famer, baby. He's a Hall he of Famer. Is. And and the thing about it was they were so they were so mentally strong. They weren't like some of these other teams that were just breaking down. These dudes were mentally strong. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they had, you know, they had Larry Bird as their coach. I mean, you have a dude that has championship experience. This dude knows what it is to be in real battles and be in the championship under pressure. And so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I was, I remember, I remember wanting the Bulls to win on some level because I like Robin and I kind of wanted to see the whole three-peat thing, but I was really kind of like wanting to see Indiana win because I liked Reggie Miller. And as a Lakers fan, as much as you want to hate Larry Bird, you can't really hate Larry Bird because the dude is so good. You have to respect him. No, um, I hated the Bulls. I can remember betting my stepdaddy <laughs> and taking the jazz. <laughs> I hated the Bulls so bad. I can I can remember betting my stepdad and I took the Supersonics. I hated the Bulls. I hated 
Oh, the, the Sonics were good. Were good. Yeah, you, they were, still you, were, you wouldn't have been wrong on the Sonics because they were good. And I still and Jordan still took my money. <laughs> you know, yeah. I hated them. I hated them. And then I, the only time I won any money against my stepfather at the time was I bet on one game where I took the Bulls and they actually won that particular game, but I lost the series. <laughs> and um, you know, <laughs> all I have to say is, even though some people I don't agree with Jordan's um, leadership style in terms of bullying people. But at the end of the day, he won hand over fist. He created a lasting legacy in basketball as well as pop culture with his shoes, of which I want to tell people, if you're trying to be in the fire movement, which we're going to discuss when we get to the financial section, don't buy no Air Jordans. It costs $5 to make his damn shoe and people out here paying $300. Anyway, yeah. he left those yeah. two marks on the world and he revolutionized basketball and made it an icon in over 300 countries when they was previously only in 200. So that's what yeah. I think of when I think of Michael Jordan. Yeah, and the thing with Jordan is because it's the, his mark is so... Well, it's so big and, so, and going to be so lasting. Like, obviously, he's the best player to play the game, mm -hmm. but... Because of because of what he did with business and how much he and how much value, how much more he raised the value of the NBA and NBA players. I mean, now mm -hmm. when you look at these, the amount of money these guys are making now is a direct result of Michael Jordan and how much value he brought to the to the game and how much I mean, this the whole idea of being able to get these ridiculous size endorsements you know, just made all the guys coming after him, you know, that much more valuable. And I, and I to bring that to, to expand on your point about the value, the value added equation of Michael Jordan, what he did was make everybody on a basketball roster brand themselves. Everybody got a podcast now. Everybody's right. trying to get their own shoe deal. Even if it's with even if it's with LeVar and the crew over there making them damn shoes that ain't worth a damn, you're still trying to get a <laughs> shoe deal. Everybody yeah. is their own brand now, and Michael Jordan has a whole lot to do with that. Because Nike right. was paying him $40 million a year. Yeah. And, I mean, you think about how big it is now. I mean, they broke off. The, can you even imagine before that an athlete would break off with his own shoe company? I mean, nope. it's made by Nike, but could you even imagine that someone like, you know, Carl Lewis or, or you know, Mean Joe Green or somebody would have would have broken off and had their own shoe company? I mean, that was that wasn't even something you would have thought is a possibility, and and now it's like athletes everywhere. That's one of the first things they do is come out. Yeah, okay, I want to, I want my own brand. I can, you can manufacture it, Nike or Adidas or Under Armour, whoever you can manufacture it. But I want my own brand, you know. Mm -hmm. Or and I you want know a what? brand within your brand, you know. I also, I also feel like when you talk about that, Chuck Taylors need to go back and give Julius Irvin some money. He made them shoes popular back in his day, but he ain't yeah. never get broke off like Michael Jordan did. And like my man no. CBF BMC is saying, he also did the Jordan clothing line. So, you know, yeah. everything Jordan. And whenever people go back and you do these type of documentaries, recanting their history, their sales go up. And now right. I really wonder the young people that was trying to say LeBron was the greatest of all time because they had never seen how great Jordan was. I'm wondering if they're thinking twice. Yeah, and you know, there's a there's a few things with that. It's hard it's hard to it's hard to judge players from previous eras against current players because the style of play is different now. The level of physicality is different now. Like you can't do the same stuff that you did back then because you would be called for a foul. I mean, they they call you they call ticky tack fouls now. You well, know, it, when, when, I mean, you breathe on 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 LeBron and you can get a foul. Well, wouldn't, you know, that, wouldn't that be more justification for the old school guys being made to play in this era? The old school guys, when you came to the rim to dunk on somebody, you you lose a teeth. Hell, you be lucky. Yeah, you could. I mean, you saw that this last episode. They show what's his name? Jordan was up there with bleeding and had his eyes split yeah, open. Split, you know? they split his wig. Split 
Yeah, I mean, so, they're like, I, we don't care who you are. You think you're Jordan? I mean, you think that means something to us? You come to you come to the rim. You're gonna you're gonna pay the price. You may get the dunk. You may get the foul, but you're gonna pay the price. You know. I think it, I think it's a whole lot easier to transpose older players to the new rules than what it would be to transition the new this new generation of players to the old rules. Some sometimes somewhat I think you're right in some respect because I do think that you know it's much more they would have to learn to play the game a little different because it's nowadays it's a it's much more about finesse than it is than it was back then. You couldn't just pound somebody and, and throw them to the ground. You couldn't do you couldn't play like Rambus. You know, you couldn't mm-hmm. play like like Barkley or, or or you know, or Rodman. You couldn't do that today because you would get called every single plus you couldn't just camp out in the lane. You would get called every, you know, just you would be fouled out in the first in the first quarter. But at the same time, you know, some of these guys nowadays are so much better as athletes. I mean, I think one of the reasons why Jordan was such, you know, was was so dominant is because he is the because in his day, he's the quality of athlete that you see today. Like, I feel like the letter, the, the level of athleticism that he had is more so the norm today than it is, you know, than it's than it's not. And so I think if Jordan was in his prime playing today, I think he would still be great. I'm not sure he would be the greatest because the level of athleticism is so much higher today. But part of the reason for that is because of Michael Jordan, you know? (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like, okay, what do you do if you go to the future and you're playing against a basically, you know, two or three generations of yourself? I mean, Mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know. I guess I'll table this thing by saying, to me, Jordan is still the greatest basketball player to ever step on the court. And of all athletes ever, he's in the top five. And I mean, I don't care if you're talking about track. I don't care if you're talking about boxing. It don't matter what you're talking about. For him to dominate his sport the way he did, he's the greatest basketball player. So you pick whoever's your greatest baseball player, track star, soccer player, you pick them, football, it don't matter. Jordan is in the top five and probably could be number one or two. Yeah, I'll agree. I think he's one of the top athletes uh, in the world. And as far as one, my last thing I'll say about him as far as business is that even though we, we often think about what he did as far as business when it came to uh, expanding the possibilities for basketball players, and athletes in general, let's not let's not forget he had an impact on on business on young entrepreneurs in general because you think you had a lot of these young hip hop artists that saw what was happening with Jordan and other athletes at that time and they realized we can brand ourselves too and that's when you started to see stuff like Fubu and and Wu Wear and. Sean John, you see, you start to see all these people with the realizing the possibilities of having clothing lines and shoe lines and branding themselves and and becoming more than just a, a rapper or an actor or a singer, but actually saying my my name is worth more than just what I can put on the screen or what I can put on music. I can do more with it. And it really did the way he the way he thought outside the box business wide changed the landscape for a lot of people. But ain't nobody make it like him. Patrick Ewan got a shoe. And I love them Ewans. I matter of fact, I would rock some Ewans. They was my price. I had Ewans back in the day. Love the shoe. Shaq had a shoe and I never bought it because it was ugly as hell. But in the spirit of what Larry is saying, a lot of people did start doing their own thing, branding themselves into other pieces of merchandise. And now Larry. I got some. I'm not gonna say wait, I got I have to stop you on that one. I'm not gonna say no one's done it like him. Because maybe no athlete to some degree, but and I'm and that's debatable because when you look at finances, LeBron is doing really pretty doing really big things. But as far as money is concerned, when you start looking at people that took that model that Jordan had, you now have you have billionaires that are kind. I mean, you have like like uh, like Dr. Dre, legitimate billionaire. Kanye West, legitimate billionaire. You know, Jay-Z, I, I'm not sure if he is, but if he's not, he's teetering on. And these are all people that sort of took that same model and said, I'm going to take, 
I'm going to take what I've done in one arena and I'm going to use my brand to expand to other areas. And they've taken that sort of Jordan playbook of business and they've used it and they have as I'm Jordan is Jordan has done great things, but you also have other dudes that have gone more and done more. And they're nah, still going. I, mean, they're, I gotta know, stop I mean, you on that one. I was first of all, I was strictly just talking about the shoe in the beginning. Nobody <laughs> has made that much money <laughs> off a shoe. And then I'm if not you gonna wanna, get into a financial debate with life gain, so I'm gonna stop then, right there. And then if you want to talk about people that have made money, um Dre is probably he's probably the next one in line because he took something headphones mm -hmm. done what michael jordan did which was put him on athletes and stars and turned a marketing campaign into 1.6 billion so if we're going to do overall picture dre is definitely next in line behind all the right. rest of them no one signed for a deal that big other than dre dr dre with those headphones and he 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 did what you said. He used the Michael Jordan playbook. You because Jordan right. put his shoes on athletes. He give athlete shoe deals. Dr. Dre did the same thing. Same as same as that thing. So yeah, that that was that was probably his legacy to other celebrities. And um, you know, I enjoyed but, the documentary. But, you know, but a lot of people did that. Like look at look at Puffy. Puffy did that with his Sean John stuff. He put his he put a lot of a lot of uh of urban rappers and, and singers and Sean John. And when people saw that, the young kids wanted to go out and buy it. And they did, you here's know, Kanye cat, done that running here, around. Here's the cat. Buying Yeezys, here's you know? the cat. Here's the cat. You, anybody wearing Sean John today? No, but here's okay. the thing though. Okay. No, no, here's the thing. People are not wearing Sean John urban wear like they used to, but they, but Sean John does have a, does have a more exclusive line where they're making higher end fashion, making suits and stuff like that, and women's True. wear, and they're True. still selling that at the high end stores. They're not selling that at TJ Maxx, but they no. are selling it at 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 Neiman's and at Bloomingdale's. And, and it still it still doesn't equivalent to Michael Jordan's financial impact with a shoe. Well, no, no, not that in that sense. But you know what I'm talking about? Just overall making money, people being able to take that. People to being able to take their brand and expanding it out and creating their own little, I don't want to say little because they're large, creating their own empire from from that from that brand. That's what I'm talking about. Jordan set that out is sort of set that 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 out that path for he blazed that trail for people to say, here's your brand, here's what it could do. And a lot of people took that path and went down there and they have and they have said, This is great. They did what Jordan did, and then they took it out and went more. I mean, you look at LeBron now. Every time you turn on a movie, it basically says Braun Productions or Braun Entertainment or whatever it is. You're seeing it everywhere. I mean, the dude is, he has that, he has his shoes, he has all kinds of stuff going on. And, you know, I mean, Kobe would have been the same way if he, if, if he had lived, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was doing he, big stuff too. I, th I just think that a lot of the guys now, because of, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Jordan. All I'm saying is, is because he, he blazed that trail. These guys are able to do this and they're getting, they have such a head start on Jordan. You know, mm -hmm. you have guys that are able to do this, you know, 10 years, 15 years before Jordan was able to do it in his career, you know? And so, I mean, Jordan was doing shoes and he was making lots of money making, you know, making shoes and selling shoes, but it wasn't until, it wasn't until later in his career that his Nike Air Jordans became Air Jordans, you know? It was a while before they before they branched that off, and it was a while before you know it was a while before he started to do some of the other things that he's doing. But a lot of these guys now they're getting such a head start on all that. So, I mean, you look at Shaq. Shaq is Shaq is a, a because he. I mean, he was more close. He was closer to that era, but he was doing such big things. I mean, the dude's the, on the board of directors for a dog on Fortune 500 company. You know. I don't know. I just I, I think that I'm not taking anything away from Jordan. I don't want you to, to, to get that impression. I just think that he laid out he started something and laid out a path for people to do it. A lot of people have taken that and expanded it way beyond what I think Jordan ever thought the possibilities could be. And I'm happy for him. I'm proud of the brothers that are sisters that are doing it, too. So. As I said, Jordan created a lasting legacy of entrepreneurship. <laughs> Outside of what his main job was, same gravy, 
just warmed over. <laughs>